Greetings YouTube and welcome to a gear video where you get to see my face and my cat. Um, today we're talking about two common grinds that we find on knives and that is the hollow grind and the flat grind. Now if I had been smarter I would have grabbed a, uh, a hollow grind but I don't have one readily at hand because I have a cat on my shoulder. Um, but we all know what a hollow grind looks like and it's a very common very popular type of grind. Um, the flat grind is um, less common. I see less of it of them. Uh, thankfully, I've seen quite a bit of them coming out of China in the knives I've been buying recently. And I was very, I'm very happy to see that. Um, and when it comes to grinds, in my opinion, the flat or convex are the superior to the hollow. Now, why do I say that? Well, if you have a flat grind, you have more material than you have to do if you have a hollow grind. Now, admittedly, hollow grinds tend to make very good slicers. That's why you see hollow grinds on straight razors for shaving, because you want that really hair-thin edge so it is shaving sharp. But that also meant, means that the edge on a straight razor is not very strong. Since you're only shaving hair on your face, you don't really have to worry about a lot of torque or a lot of stress on that edge. Um, but when you're using a knife, particularly if you're using it in, in, in an outdoorsy kind of a setting, or even on a daily basis, you may want something that's a little bit more substantial, and a flat grind or a convex grind is going to give you more meat on that blade, making it stronger. Um, but there's also another reason. When you're pushing or pulling a knife through a material to cut it, it's very similar to the way the prow of a ship slices the water it's moving through and you want something that moves the material out of the way and a flat grind or convex is going to more effectively or efficiently rather move the material out of the way as opposed to a hollow grind which in many ways can kind of act like the way a doorstop is it's going to wedge itself in something as opposed to move the material aside <clears throat> and and get I get it get the stuff out of its own way, and that isn't necessarily a big issue if you're cutting something a thin slice of something off of another something, but if you're cutting through the center of something, that could be an issue. You may not get the type of material um, movement you need to make an effective cut. Um, and I've found over the years of carrying different types of knives that I most definitely appreciate the flat grind or convex grind uh, to, to a hollow grind. Uh, getting a flat grind, I think, is easier to do technically, um, like machine-wise and things like that, or even by hand, than a good convex, because you have to make sure that you are using um, a grinding belt with the right kind of amount of slack on it, and then the person has to really kind of know what they're doing. And, and a flat grind is a little bit easier to achieve. Um, and I've heard, I'm not positive on this, that a hollow grind, one of the reasons it's so popular, is that it is easier to accomplish mechanically because you can actually use two wheels doing this and then you're drawing your material through there. So you're grinding both sides at the same time. Now I'm not positive that is necessarily the reason that hollow grinds are so common. I think it just may be the popularity, it's kind of like the old the old joke, why are barns red? Well, barns are red because red paint is cheap. Why is red paint cheap? Because barns are red. So it could just be a situation where someone was convinced that a hollow grind is the best grind to have, and so that just became a feedback loop. Whereas I consider the flat grind to be... Um, a better design, it's more material, and the weight difference between a hollow grind and a flat grind, you are never gonna notice this. So that is not something you have to worry about. Um, uh, lately, all of the knives I've been carrying on a daily basis have been flat grinds. I really love them. And when you have something like like this on a, on a Puko, now this is effectively a flat grind. It is ever so slightly convex, so slight in, in its convex that it is effectively a flat grind with a tiny micro bevel at the edge. Um, and uh, 
these things are just a beautiful, beautiful thing to have in your hand. If you've never had a chance to have a good quality Puko in your hand, go get one. They're worth your time. They're a beautiful thing. Now that there's not a cat in my way, now here we have, this is the kind of just the classic hollow grind, and I think you, yeah, you can probably see that right there. You can see the, the way the shadows are playing on it. And this is thankfully fairly subtle, so it's not going to be uh, too bad. I've seen some very pronounced hollow grinds on knives, and it, it almost seems kind of absurd um, the degree of hollow grind that you can actually find on some blade. Now let's see if I've got a flat grind getting around. I do. Here we go. This is a flat grind which comes from the spine all the way to the edge and then there is a secondary bevel here. Um, and this is, do I know what the heck this is? It's a D2. I think it might be an F and grow. I'm not 100% positive. They like to use, sometimes they like to use a little weird proprietary screw three lobe thing which makes it really difficult to freaking tighten up your or loosen your uh, your center hubs which I find more than a smidge annoying thankfully the the screws here are just torques uh, but when it comes to daily use I find that the flat grind is the superior although there are people going to argue with me on this one they're going to go oh I love the flat grind and then you it's it, it is subjective and I freely admit this but this is my preference and, and that's from using a knife every day uh, and carrying one since I was 12. So I do have 42 years of history behind me on this one and I have discovered that I think the best grind is the flat or convex and the convex is a little more difficult to achieve. Also sometimes you'll see that referred to as a moron edge m-o-r-a-n named after um, uh, the designer uh, Moran or Moron. I don't know how the proper way to pronounce his name. Um, but it is the convex is, is a more generic term for that. But I believe he was the one that really kind of popularized that blade um, grind in the U.S. at least. So let's talk about blade grinds, the ones that we like best and why we like them best. I have found the flat grind to be the best cutter's and the ones that seem to have the most substantial uh, wear characteristics when it comes to use out here in the real world, um, as opposed to the flat grinds, which I think they're, the edges end up being kind of thin. You're going to have less uh, uh, strength there. And I mean, highly appropriate to straight razors. I don't think they're highly appropriate to your daily carry needs. So let's talk about edge types.